Hello! Today we have a diagnostic repair on this gigantic industrial microwave. This is a Sharp 1900 watt R23 AM. It has been, well, the problem was in use, you can use it for a little while and then it throws up an error code. Nobody wrote down what the error code on it is, but there are two we can fix, which is one is the exhaust temperature is too high and it shuts down, and the other one is the magnetron temperature is too high and it shuts down. So I'm guessing that it gets used in a greasy, dusty environment, that it's perhaps clogged up somewhere, a filter or a fan or that. So we're going to take this monstrous thing to bits and see if we can clean it and get it back into working. Don't worry, I will bring the camera around a bit so you can actually see things. Here is the said interior. Now, I can see a screw there and a screw there and hopefully that'll lift out and we'll see what the rest of the grating looks up in there and then I will take the outside. Well, well there's, there's a problem right there. There's a grill here, a grating, and it is full of grease and dust. So, that might even be a screw hole there once at the end. Hmm. We'll take all that off. Take the sides off, side panels, side panel, panels, and the back panel, and we'll have a good look inside. Right, first let's get this interior one off. Okay, so that bit just left straight out. Let me bring you inside for a peek. Now, you'll have noticed on this microwave, there's no turntable. It doesn't spin anything around. It uses a waveguide which actually reflects the microwave radiation roundabout and keeps changing the direction of it. So it's the microwaves that actually rotate as opposed to the object. But that looks fucking bogging up in there. So we'll give that a bit of a clean in a minute. But let's get the rest of the outsides off. Oh, we'll start with this front grill. Yeah, I'll pull this right to the front and have at it with that. Oh, this has never been off. Jeez. Has that released anything? Not even a little bit. No, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right, we'll take off the screws for the perimeter. I probably should have started this side because Everybody wants to see the magnetron. I like that some of these are self-tapping screws and some of them are actually machine screws. Like those, do you ever get a feeling that someone's put this back together just using whatever screws went wherever? Come on. Here we go. There she blows. Let's just set that there. Right, there's nothing exciting about that. Oh, Jesus Christ. So what have we got? Two giant transformers. They look like two giant capacitors. A uh, whole load of electrical gubbins. Oh, that's good to put fuses in sensible locations if you need to get to them. Ah, there's the door switch, should we ever have a problem with the door. Twin switched. Okay, redundant. Nice. There's the motor for the waveguide. Now, there's a fan in there. That actually looks, I don't know if you can see in there, it actually looks not too bad. It's not full of nonsense. So, does that go through? I'm going to presume the magnetron's in under this side, so we'll get to that next. But this looks alright. There's, it's a bit filthy in there, but it's not terrible. Is that in behind the, yeah, in behind the grill bit? Well, we'll see if we can get the front off and, or the bottom and give that a bit of a clean, a bit of a hoover. Right, let's get the back off. I, mean, I can see the magnetron if I poke my head through the thing. Right, what's holding this bad boy on? Nothing. Sheer willpower. 
Right, hopefully there's enough room just to pop that up at the top. There we go. Is that dual magnetrons? Wow, oh, it is. Okay. One magnetron, two magnetrons. That'll be why there are two transformers. Right, and that's the magnetron cooling fan, which should suck air in through this environment, blow it through the two magnetrons in their heat sinks. Heat sink, heat sink, magnetrons in there. That means it's got an, ooh, an upper and a lower waveguide. Goes in there, hits the, we saw the spinning thing in inside. It must have a similar one in the bottom then, nice. And there's the outlets. They look all right. So, I'm guessing it's all that horrible, yucky, mucky stuff in under there that we're going to have to clean. <gasps> Great! wonder how we get the bottom tree off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's spin it around again. If you don't like dirty things and dust and grease and grime, yeah, shut your eyes. You're not going to want to see any of this. So, if we peek in there, can you see all the dust and grease and yuck? Yeah, I think we'll give that a, a blast with the hoover and clean out this front vent and see if we can't clean up some of that. Ugh. Right, I have, oh, let me get down a bit. Given that a uh, scrape and hoover out and hoovered in as much as I can, it doesn't look too bad now. So, I'm not sure if that had any effects to play. Now, we've looked at the Magnetron cooler fan and it seems to be all right. So the last one is the exhaust, which I'm presuming is in here because this is the only, excuse me, exhaust port that I can see, so I'm going to take this cover off and have a look inside. Let's have, right, you don't need to come off, you don't need to come off. Probably unplug you. I don't know if that's a fan or... Right, let's start here. Right, it's tabbed under, so it's going to have to slide. Right, you lot, off you go. One. Ooh. There's a screw here that's holding the light on. It's also stopped me sliding it off. Oh, is it really bonded on that tightly? Are there any screws I've missed? I don't see any screws. It's pretty well bonded on. Right, I should maybe look inside just in case there's anything I can see in here. No, nothing in there. We're going to have to. Get it off one with that. Time for brute force and ignorance. Gently, gently. It's making the right noises. Gent. Let me slide it over a bit. Oh, there we go. I'll peek first. Ugh. Right, who's holding what here? Is it you? And a bit of tape. So what have we got in here? We've got... Nothing. What? Do you think that's the temperature sensor for the exhaust output? Which just bonds on the body. As it looks like it. Oh yeah, it says 120 degrees C on it. So, there's the temperature sensor for the exa exhaust thing. And there doesn't appear to be a fan in there as such. So, where does the fan live? Ah, perhaps it is all one fan. 
One for cooling the magnetron. Yeah, I can only see one fan. So it must split the airflow over the magnetron and through the... Yeah, I'm going to give this a clean now as well. A bit of a scrape and a hoover and we'll do the inside as well. I won't force you to watch this either. Unless you want to. Nobody wants to watch that. Right, I need a scraper of some variety. Ah, I know what I've got. How about a scraper? Okay, as I suspected or found out, this fan blows across the magnet, the two magnetrons. It also blows up through the grill in there and that goes in the microwave cabinet and then back out through this exhaust vent, which is now scraped and clean. So there's not much else left to do but put it all back together and see what happens. So let us reassemble. Right, I will continue to reassemble this and then we'll come back once it's reassembled, reassembled and see if it actually fires back up again. Fingers crossed. All right. Now for the moment of truth, let us power up. It's a good start, it's making a noise. Let's put something... Oh wait! I need to bring you in to see this. You can see the waveguide spinning around right now, it must just spin all the time. Okay. Well, there's little air coming in. So, let's put something inside. Let's put our jug of water inside. And uh, fire up. How about 10 seconds? Well, it worked. Oh, no, I just want to show you the power consumption on the plug. So, at idle, let me just. Uh, Turn this off. Get a reflection out of the way. Idle, that's 39. Let me just give it another 10 seconds. Got boom! There you go. 2.9 kilowatts. 3,000 watts. Holy shit! Yeah, water's not warm yet, but. It's working. So the last thing we've got to do is put the wave guide cover back on, but it appears to work. And the only thing I can do now is give it back, tell them to try it, and see what happens.